Hey guys, JSR John here. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having a fantastic day and looking forward into learning some key tuning tricks here. As you can tell by the title, we are looking into how to tune mid-engine cars. I've received so many questions from guys, whether that's in my live streams or in my comments under my videos or even directly through Xbox. John, how do you tune mid-engine cars? I always seem to have an issue where it doesn't feel consistent. It's either understeering whilst exiting corners or oversteering whilst entering them. The car seems to bounce around a lot. There's just never a good balance, whether it's the NSXs, whether it's a Ford GT, whether it's a Testarossa, whatever the car is, even a Lotus Esprit, all of these mid-engine cars seem to have some type of quirk to them where you can't tune them exactly the same as front-engine cars. And I'm here to tell you that for the most part, that is absolutely correct. You do need to tune them differently. The reason being is that because the engine is mounted near the rear axle, it completely changes the weight distribution of the car. And this has a massive impact on the way that the car performs, the way it handles, and ultimately, if you do not have a tune setup that is optimized for that, then your driving style will be compromised and you'll often find that with just having a very shaky car, which no one wants. Everyone wants a car that is fast, yet drivable at the same time. So that's why we're gonna tuck into this car, one of my favorites, the Honda NSX 2005 edition. Very, very popular in A-Class. An absolute beast in its division, which is uh, Sport GT Icons. But we have actually got a build for B-Class. Why B-Class? Let me tell you. It's an absolute beast in B-Class. However, no one seems to use it. Everyone uses it in A, but not in B. So that's why I thought I'll make a tune. Um, just for reference, this is a tune that I made for a different car than this GTR Le Mans Edition 1995 around Prague Full Reverse. Lovely track in B-Class. Always a part of our banter streams, our weekly lobbies, especially when we run B-Class races. As you can see, the Nissan has a 201.5 here, which is a very, very strong tone. This NSX can actually beat it. It can get into the low 201s. So it's probably one of the best tracks for the NSX 05. Um, other ones that I particularly rate it around would be Spa and Watkins Glen and Silverstone. So this car is just an all round beast. But anyway, let's tuck into how do you build and how do you tune them? The first half of this video is gonna be how to build it. And then the second part will be about how to tune it. Without further ado, let's tuck into the build of this car and then we'll tuck into the juicy stuff. So, as always, we'll first look at the conversions. Now for this car, we've gone for a full handling setup, as you can see on the stats on the left-hand side there, 5.7 handling, 7.8 acceleration. Looks like it doesn't have much XL, but believe me, the car is actually got a much more performance than that rating gives it credit for. So, basically, we have gone with stock engine swaps. There's no changes in the drivetrain, no change in the aspiration. And there is no engine upgrades. Nothing here has been done. So it is completely stock power for this NSX. What we will tuck into is platform and handling. So, you know, typical things here, such as the race brakes. We have race springs and dampers. We have race front anti-roll bars race rear anti-roll bars, we have no roll cage. Typically, this provides more handling, but I actually found that, as you can see with the stats, it's pretty negligible. There's no difference there, and I certainly found no improvement in terms of the way the car actually handled. So I wanted to keep the car as light as possible. And the same goes for the weight reduction. You know, especially if you're doing a handling build, you need to go with the lightest car possible. Um, that's just the way it is. It has a significant impact on the handling. I'd say only with cars that are really built for pure power would you be willing to go with, well, you're not even willing, but you can get away with having a bit of a heavier build because you just have so much more horsepower to compensate for it. But in this case, the lighter the build, the better. Stock clutch. Stock transmission, realize that, you know, it's a hefty bit of PI here, 9 PI to get a sport transmission. And even then, the gears are not, even though they are adjustable, the gear ratio itself is actually not much better. So, you know, we just kept it as stock and it works lovely. Driveline is race and the differential. Believe me, guys, when I say this, I cannot emphasize it enough. The differential can really make or break your car, whatever type of car you're building, but especially when it comes to mid-engined cars or even rear-engined cars like the Porsches, 
because it's the differential that can make such a difference with the consistency of the car when you are entering and exiting corners. But we will tuck into this later in the video, so keep your ears and eyes peeled. On to the tyres. We have gone with street tyres. A lot of PI to go with sport. You can get away with doing them, but then you have to sacrifice both the weight and the tyre whips which we don't want to do that. In B class, I have found with most of my best cars, stock tires or street tire compound works best. Front tire compound, front tire whip, sorry, we have gone with 225. Not all the way here, I found it actually a bit too oversteery, too much grip at the front when we've gone with max front whips. So we've just gone with the second upgrade here, 225. And the rear tire whips, we have gone with 315. So it's max whips. As, as I mentioned before, when I tried other setups, there was just too much oversteer. Um, and especially around Prague, there is such a fine balance between having too much or too little grip at the front end of the car. So uh, we just made a happy medium here. But just remember these elements of the build up the front tire whips and the rear tire whips, because this will play a lot into how we have actually made the setup of the car. Onto the rims, we have simply gone for the lightest ones possible, which are the RG2s. There are some other rims you can get away with using, but out of personal preference, I just took these rims, but you can take anything that you want. And the rim size is stock. You can bump it up to the front. Obviously, it adds a little bit more weight, but it is a great trick if you are needing more rotation in a car on the fastest bends around corners. So think about tracks like Spa or Silverstone where there are quite a few fast corners and you really need the front end to get around that long radius bend. This is where bumping up the front rim size is needed. However, we don't need it on this car. Same goes for the rear rim. And finally, the aerodynamics. So race front bumper and race rear wing. We, we can't have a handling car without these, surely can we guys? <laughs> That is the build element. We are now going to tuck into how to tune a mid-engine car. So let's go right into it here. 29-29 on the tyre pressures. Gears are non-adjustable. Camber for this NSX, we're going with minus 2.0, minus 2.0. And then for the toe, you can see I've done it you know, with some other cars, such as like my Maserati tuning guide and a few others that you have noticed on the channel. Sometimes I really do like to play with the toe because it really helps on cars that are naturally quite planted to the floor. And I've noticed this with the NSX quite a lot, both the 05 and the older NSX. They can both feel very planted to the floor. And uh, sometimes it just makes it difficult for the car to give that rotation that you really want it to have in, in moments. So I've gone with plus 0.2 front toe and then plus 0.4 rear, but feel free, feel free to bring these down back to zero if you find that the car just rotates a little bit too much for your liking. This works perfectly for my driving style though, and it was definitely giving me the fastest results around Prague. Front caster, sorry, the front caster angle is 7.0 degrees. Onto the anti-roll bars, you know, nothing major, nothing controversial here, just come for uh, roll bars that offered me the best balance of responsiveness and so we've gone with 30 on the front 40 on the rear reason why we haven't gone with 40 on the front is just i really wanted a bit more help with the car hooking up um, whilst it's in corner entry and then going like through the apex and i just found that doing this it then offered the car to really aim at the apex the way that i wanted to on to the springs okay so this is where things get interesting for mid-engine cars. Why have we made the front so much softer than the rear? Well, it's very simple, you know. What I alluded to earlier was about the weight balance, which is caused by the engine sitting closer to the rear axle compared to front engine cars. This has a massive impact on the way that a car performs. You know, if there's more weight at the rear end, then guess what? There's less traction on the front tires and less traction means less handling on the front tires. So the way to counteract this, which you would have noticed with my first ever, well, some of my first ever tuning guides, such as the McLaren F1 in S class, is that basically, you know, we need more weight to be falling down on the front tires, the front springs for the majority of turns. 
So that's why I've gone with such a big difference here. 200 pounds worth of distance, actually. I usually go with at least 100 for most cars, whether it's B class, A class, S class. If they are mid-engine cars, I'm usually going for a balance that's a bit like this, regardless of how stiff or soft the springs are, you know, um, whether it's like all the way down or all the way up, there is still always this kind of difference that I set up between the front and rear springs. As for the ride height, um, you don't always need to do this, uh, but this does help on cars where you still find that the car on corner exit is simply just lifting. So the front end is just lifting up too much and you start to plow off into the distance. You don't find yourself really turning much when you're coming out of the exit of turns. So 4.6 on the front, 5.0 on the rear. Um, you can get away with having the ride height all the way down. You can in this car. Um, but it was just because of the case of Prague, the curbs do stick up a fair bit. And as I mentioned before, both of the NSXs do seem to scrape the floor quite a lot. So this is why I raised them, just to help glide over the curbs a little bit. Rebound, so rebound stiffness is 11 on the front and then 10 on the rear. Uh, this is actually to help just the tiniest bit with adding a bit more rotation on corner exit. So this kind of complements what we've done with the springs and the ride height, both where we've set them up for oversteer. And the same goes for the bump stiffness, uh, but it's not as big in terms of the difference. So the front is 2.0, the rear is 2.5. What happens here is because the front stiffness is a bit lower, it basically means that the front springs will actually compress a little bit faster, just a tiny bit faster compared to the rear springs. And this allows the nose of the car to dip down a little bit faster so you can get more weight on the front tires, which, you know, especially when you're trying to enter corners and you're going into braking zones this can be a big help downforce now this is quite interesting uh, why why have we gone with something like this why not just go with typical you know max front max rear well if you actually pay attention to the numbers here 100 pounds of front downforce 255 pounds worth of rear downforce uh, so that's that you know a lot of cars actually have different values so always pay attention to the numbers um, typically what you'd find with most cars it'd actually be something that's more like 100 on the front and 200 on the rear um, so that's what I started off with but I was still finding that the car was actually understeering too much it was just understeering too much on corner exits that's why it took just a little bit of downforce off of the rear but if you need more stability guys by all means, please increase the rear downforce. But this is something that can come in mighty handy with mid-engine cars because it is that instance, the same with Porsches, as I mentioned before, that sometimes you're trying to get out of a corner and the nose just seems to pick up too much. There's too much weight that then sits on the rear tires and then the car doesn't know what to do other than just go in a straight line. This counteracts it along with the springs, the ride height and the rebound. Braking. 47% on the rear, braking pressure, I've gone with 140%. This is down to personal preference. I try and keep it relatively low nowadays, um, but you know, by all means guys, um, pay it up to 160, 180, 200%, whatever you want. Onto the differential. Now I was saying to you guys earlier that it's so important that you do have a differential when dealing, especially, especially with mid-engine cars you should make sure you have a differential for any type of car but especially mid-engine and the reason being is the acceleration stat you know there's nothing special about that there it's the deceleration that's so important why is this the case well effectively put what you need to account for is the fact that although throughout a lot of the setup we have tried to counteract understeer that happens on corner exit however the thing that i hear the most from everyone the thing that everyone complains about is the fact that when braking, cars always seem to oversteer. When when you have when you're not applying anything on the throttle or acceleration, the tail of the rear of the mid-engine car it just it just spins out. It just loses control completely. This is why we increase the deceleration. Why is that? Well, the deceleration diff really controls how much difference there is in each of the rear tires or wheels spinning. So if you have it completely at zero, this means that the le whatever's the outside tire, that can spin independently compared to the inside tire. And if there's too much of a difference, that's what creates the oversteer when we are slowing down. However, 
the greater percent you give the differential, basically the sooner it will lock the wheels together. So it's not like they're gonna lock completely, but the idea is they lock to then move at the same rate, and this offers more stability. Now, as you can see with the setup I have, I've only gone with 10%, which is actually really conservative for a mid-engine car. There are plenty of cars that I have built where I have gone with 25%, 30%, 40%, even up to 50%. And when it comes to Forza GT cars, then it can get really absurd. You can get really high numbers on some of them cars like the Porsche, um, RSR or the Ferraris um, but in this car I just happen to find a happy medium at 10% but make sure you do experiment with this because this is the thing that will ultimately give you more stability in the first half of your corner after all you don't want to have to spend so much time just holding on the brakes to keep the thing steady you want to be able to coast and that's where deceleration diff comes into play but that is the tune guy that is the setup I have already shared this tune, so by all means guys, feel free to download it and give it a whirl yourself and let me know in the comments how you find it. I also wanna hear from you guys what you think of this tuning guide. Is it something that has helped you to improve the way that you build and tune mid-engine cars? There are so many cars that are in this game which are mid-engine and they are absolutely beautiful. They are among my favorites, as I said before, both the 92 and 2005 Honda NSX, four GTs, um, the, test, the Ferrari Testarossas, the Lotus Esprit. There's just so many mid-engine cars that I love. The Lamborghinis, um, yeah, just so many among, among my personal favorites. I wanna hear from you guys in the comments. What are some of your favorite mid-engine cars? What are the cars that you really love to drive in each class? But if you've enjoyed this video, guys, please do give it a thumbs up. It's one of the best things you can do to show YouTube that you found this content useful and that you want more people to see it and you wanna see more content like it. Also, make sure that you do subscribe to this channel. Can't believe we have made it over the thousand subscriber mark. Thank you everyone who have been here since the beginning, all of the new people that are here and you are just in for the ride. Believe me, there is a lot more content coming up and you can always get involved in our weekly live streams with myself, JSR John, and my trusty speedy friend LZR Rossi Forza RC finalist and general beast of Forza so if you want to get involved in some casual clean but very fast racing get involved with us every Wednesday and you'll find the live streams on my YouTube channel but that's it for this tuning guide thank you for watching everyone have a great day and see you in the next video